When you've finished all your animations and you're ready to export, make sure your animation timeline starts at 1. The end of the timeline must be the last frame of an animation you made. Go to File, Export, FBX. There are specific export settings you must follow to convert your weapon into a mod, which I've put on screen. One extra thing to change is set your Simplify value under the Bake Animation category to 0. Exporting with Simplify on causes slight wobbles in hands during animations. Once you've selected all the proper settings, click the plus icon next to the operator settings and name the preset to anything you want. Now, you can auto-assign all the correct values for future exporting by clicking on Operate Presets and selecting the preset you just made. You should save your FBX somewhere inside Unity's Asset folder. In Unity's Project File Browser, the bottom window if you're new to the user interface, browse and select your weapon UI render image you made, and change the texture type to Sprite. Click Apply to save your changes. Now click on your weapon's FBX file and make sure you're on the Materials tab. This is where you can assign the weapon's textures or materials depending on how you textured your weapon model from the earlier video. If you're using materials, right-click the file browser and create a new material. Change the name to name the color and what physical material it's supposed to be. Change the color by clicking the white square and choosing what new color you want to use. Adjust the metallic and smoothness for how you want light to interact and how reflective you want the material to be. Back to your weapon FBX file, you can drag and drop the material into the corresponding slot to assign it. Remember to click Apply to save changes. I'm duplicating the material by pressing Ctrl D and changing the color to silver since my model uses two materials for two different colors. If you use the color palette to texture your weapon model, you can follow the same steps from earlier. Instead of assigning a color to your material, click on the Albedo slot and assign your UV palette there. With the texturing done, go to the rig setting and change the avatar definition to a copy from this model, and click Apply. Go to the Animation tab now. Disable resample curves and set animation compression to off. I recommend opening your weapon's blend file and keeping it open during this part, because we'll now be assigning your animations as animation clips for Unity. Where it says Scene, rename it to your weapon's name, then the action the clip will be. I assign the clips based on the order I animated them, First is the idle pose. The start of the clip is animation's first frame. The end of the clip is animation's last frame. Press the plus icon to add a new clip. Next, I assign the aim down sight's animation clip. You don't need to assign the aiming pose itself as long as the last frame of your aim down sight's animation ends on your aiming pose. I repeat this process of assigning my animation clips for the draw animation. For the sprint, since I made a looping animation, I have to make two clips devoted to the sprint action. The first clip must be a transition from idle to the first frame of the loop. The second clip is the sprinting loop itself. In the looping clip, you must enable loop time to have the animation repeat. If you're not making an advanced reload mechanic, just assign your reload clip as normal. If you are making an advanced reload, there's a few extra steps you must take. After assigning the start and end of frame of the clip, open the Events tab, and click the button next to the timeline. Drag the event icon along the timeline to where your magazine is inserted during animation. Rename the function to Motion Done. Make another event, called Reload Done, and move that near the end of the timeline. The Motion Done event refills the ammo count of the weapon, while Reload Done signifies the end of the animation, and lets the player use the gun to shoot or aim again. If your weapon reloads like a pump action shotgun, then this video won't be covering that part. You can follow Malamo's modding text guide until I decide to cover this topic. Keep assigning the rest of your animation clips until you have to assign that fire animation, if you made one for your gun. For the fire animation, if the gun doesn't need the next round to be manually chambered, then enable the additive reference pose checkbox. If the gun does need manual chambering, do not enable a checkbox and leave it as a normal animation clip.